Now this is the Precision Core printer by Epson. It's the Workforce 3640, 3620, 7610, 7110, all the new Precision Core printers. Now I'm going to show you how to clean the printhead, but also if it doesn't work correctly, I'm going to show you how to take the printhead out and do a real extensive cleaning. But we don't want to take the printhead out till first we try a couple things. In the kit, you get the fast acting cleaner and you're going to get a syringe with a little black tip. And in the kit, you also get this little black plunger type tip. I'll show you how you're going to use that. Now down in the printer, these are the little needles that stick up that go in the bottom of the cartridge. Now around those little needles are tiny little holes, very tiny. The first thing I would do is go in there and try to manually clean them out. Use something really, really thin. And then you can see how you can clean it out. Sometimes they'll get clogged up for whatever reason. How you know when you have to take that print head out to clean it? is how the chemical goes in. Now pushing chemical into the printhead is really not a good thing but you have to sometimes do that. It's better to draw the chemical up so if the clog is laying on top of the microscreen pushing down only makes it worse. Drawing backwards draws all the Anything that's clogging or block it, or if it's dried, it's going to pull it back up into the syringe. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a piece of paper towel in here. Then I'm going to saturate it with the cleaner. So let me do that first, and then I'll show you how that's going to work. That paper towel and slid it under there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak this whole area with the chemical. Now before I pour the chemical in there, I'm going to show you what you need to do. When you get the chemical, I want you to get a very, very hot cup of water like this. The hotter the better. Now you're going to stick the chemical in that water like this. That's going to warm up the chemical. By warming up the chemical, it's going to make it act even faster. Now, do you have to warm it? I would suggest that you do. But if you don't want to do it, if you're afraid that you might burn yourself with the hot water, then don't. But I'm warming it up right now. Then I'm going to draw up half the syringe with the cleaner. I'm going to squirt some down on top of that paper towel. So I'm going to let that sit warming up for a, a minute or two. Like I said, I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to drag the print head over the top of that. I'm going to go on this side and put some chemical. Now it's not going to damage anything because there's another sponge underneath it that's part of the printer. And this will evaporate. See, now I'm moving it back and forth. I want to get that really saturated. And I'm going to let that sit for about 15 minutes. This way, if there's any dried ink on the bottom of the printhead, that's going to soften it and dissolve it. Now, fill the syringe back up. Now, here's how you're going to test to see if you should remove the printhead or not. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the video too. Go in there, you're going to get right over that needle and you're going to put the tip, which will fit very tight over that needle sticking up, and you're going to push down just a little bit. What you're trying to feel to see if the chemical is going in, just like ink would go in. And if it doesn't, like it stops, then don't push any harder. Don't do any more. Try to push it down. I've been waiting. 
Now that went in easy. So now what I would do is just slightly pull back. See it? Did you see that cloud of ink come up? So if there's anything blocking that microscreen down below there, now we just pulled it up in. Now if you want, you can go over and dump that out and start off fresh for the next one. That's a good sign when you see that. And you don't push hard. That's, that's a mistake. We'll do the cyan and the magenta. Well, I know the magenta is not flowing. I know it. it for whatever reason, it just doesn't want to go in. And we're going to find out in the video why, though. So now I'm going to go over the magenta, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to skip over to cyan. I'm going to try to push. It's just barely budging. So I'm not going to force it. Now if I pull back a little bit, I notice I, I can barely get anything to come up. Just a little bit. So there's definitely something clogging that printhead. Most of the time when a printhead clogs like this, it's either poor quality ink or the printer hasn't been used for a couple of weeks, a month, maybe even longer. Now I know why this one is clogged because I left the cartridges out of this printer. I put it in our warehouse and everything dried out. So I do know why it's that one's clogged up like that. Now the other ones seem to come free pretty good. So now, now I'm going to stop. Because if I were to force the chemical through that would be a mistake. Now you can take your time though. You can push a little bit, pull up a little bit, push down a little bit, and pull up a little bit. Now over time that will work. So you don't have to take the printhead out. Just take your time. That's all. Okay, now I'm going to point something out in the video. This back here is the chipboard. That's when you put your cartridges in, it register it. I found on a lot of the Epsons that I've seen, sometimes these little contact springs get damaged. And when they do, you can't use the machine. But here's something I found out. I can take that little contact spring off without taking anything out of the printer. All I need is a little screwdriver to go underneath the bottom of it, and it'll lift it right out. See, and behind it, if you notice, there's the contact of the chipboard. So if I slid this up, I could replace it. Now, Epson doesn't sell a part, but I found out I took this off an old XP300, real old. This is a precision core. This is one of the latest printers out. And I had one bad on a 7610, so that's how I know. So what you can do is you can slide this right off, take that one off, and swap it out. Because these just slide right up. There, I did it with this, just in my hand I could do it. Alright, and then this way you can slide it right out. And then when the one that's in the machine, you use a screwdriver to get under a little screwdriver and you can take it right out. And say so it'll slide. If I want to, I can continue to slide it right off. But I found out these little springs can get damaged or they don't make good contact. And you get all kinds of errors. Something to look at. Take a real good look at it with a flashlight. Make sure that you don't have, if you're getting, cannot recognize, cannot recognize. And no matter what you put in there, you get the same thing. An Epson or an aftermarket. That's what it's going to be. And maybe uh, you can find an old printer and take this off. Okay, there it is. I just took it off. So you can see it's really kind of delicate. So it wouldn't take much to damage it. So if you've got a screwdriver right under this bottom lip here, when it's in the printer, it'll pop right up. So you don't have to take anything off.
Okay, now I'm going to show you how to take the printhead out. Now, I've let this soak for a while, and then I'm going to, before I take that printhead out, I'll try that magenta again. And I'm going to bring it over here temporarily so I can get it out. Now, this printer has a problem. It has a power supply problem. That's why it was sitting over in the warehouse. When you turn it on, it waits a minute, shuts itself off. So the way I figure it, it doesn't work before I started. So after I get done, if it still doesn't work, I haven't lost anything. So don't get discouraged. Because sometimes these printers, no matter what you do, you can't fix it. But the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take that screw and that screw right there out. So I have a little screwdriver. It's got a little magnetic tip on it. A pair of needle nose. And then I have a flashlight. Because sometimes working on these, you need that extra little light. So, like I said, you're going to take that screw out. And you're going to take that screw out. Now, that, uh, see, that's where I like a magnetic screwdriver. This way I can't lose the screw. Okay, now we'll take the other one in the back out. Those are the first two things we're going to do. Okay, now let's go back here and this, this, this part just lifts off. We can set that down. So you see the way I did that? It just lifts out. You're going to reassemble it the exact opposite of what we're doing here. Now we got the one in the back off, but I need to take one more thing off. It's going to be right here. It's a little side plate. Let me get the flashlight and I can show you. Okay. And there's the two catches right there. There's one right there and one right there. You're going to get put the little screwdriver underneath it, lift, and that plate will come out. You just want to lift it, there it goes, it's coming out. Now you're going to have one more on the other side over here you're going to have to get, and then that whole thing will lift right off. So take your time, because there's one more right up in here. See if I can shine the light on it. There it is, right there. Right there. So you put the screwdriver behind it and you'll be able to lift it right out. That's it. Now, the next thing we're going to re remove is that chipboard right here. Now, we're not going to disconnect any cables. None at all. You can if you want to, but you better mark what goes where. I'm not going to take them off because I found there was no need to. But if you feel more comfortable doing that, then go ahead. On each side of this board, there's a little spring catch. I'm bring it over and show you. Let me see if I can get the camera down in there. And you can see what I'm talking about. Let's see, hold on. There's a hole right there. I'm going to push the small blade of the screwdriver in there and it's going to lock that one side. Then we'll go over to the other side and lock it and that board will just be able to be lifted up. So what I would do is just move it farther down if you have to and then go in with the screwdriver to release it. And that little tip into the side there so then I can release it. I'll move over here now. You can see it's starting to come up. So what I try to do is get that at that point and pull up on it. Like right there. Now I don't want it to slide back down so I'll probably stick the other screwdriver that I have right underneath it. So then I can work on the, the other side. Okay. So that'll hold that from sliding back down on me. Now I can go over the other side and concentrate. Now you can't get it from the outside because that white 
piece of plastics in a way. So you have to kind of slide it in between the side of the machine, like right in there, till you unclick it, and then you'll be able to slide it up. Because that end's not in now, you just have to concentrate on that end right there. Okay, now I just got that screwdriver in there correctly. Kind of pried it out a little bit, and now it should be ready to come up. Now I got the other screwdriver holding that other side so it didn't slide in. So now you should be able to go in there, just grab it, and start to slide it up. That's what I'm doing here. Now just lay it up out of the way. Now you don't have to disconnect anything there. But now you can see what I was talking about. You can slide those things right off and replace them. Should you ever find a bad little plate out and you'll be able to see three little screws. And that plate just lifts right out. Once you get the board out and that out, you'll be able to pick the plate up and take it right out. And I use a little needle nose to help me work it out. Take your time. There it is. Now there are the removal to remove the printhead, the three screws. So you're going to do this and wiggle it out. Now you can reach in and there's the printhead. But it's just that I have to put a lot of paper towels. So I marked the ribbon cable A and B. And, I'm, and if you're not sure how to put them back in, take a picture and keep it. Now I'm going to slide the ribbon cable out. Okay. And this way I'll be able to put the print head on the bench. So you want to make sure you mark how it goes back together. Okay. It's going to slide in right inside there. So pay close attention to this. Because if you put it in wrong, obviously it's not going to work. But like I told you in the beginning of the video, it didn't work before you started. You have nothing to lose. Now I have some paper towels, and I'm going over the top with the plunger. I'm pushing backwards. I want to first free it. Then I can see if it's going to stream any ink out or a chemical out. Then I know the printhead's clear. In other words, if I'm able to take that chemical and push it through from the other side, then I know there's my magenta, I'm sorry, my cyan and yellow. So there I'm taking my time. Be very careful. If you get a lot of chemical in that little, where those little ribbon cables go, make sure it's dry, extremely dry before you put it back in. Because if you put it back in wet, you may short out the something in the printer or the print head. This takes time. You're not going to do this in five minutes. Take your time. Sometimes it takes me a couple of days because I do a little bit and I let it sit. All the other ones. I've got the chemical on that magenta. I'll hold it up. It's starting to come out now. So I'm actually getting it to spray. Yep. That's how I cleared it up. That's how you can too. I'm going to point this out. Make sure you, the, everything's dry. If you get any chemical in here, the contact area, make sure you dry it. Make sure it's real dry before you put it all back together. But there you go. Now this printer has a problem with the power supply, so that's why I decided to take it apart and show you this video. But that's how I freed it. Now putting it back together, you just got to do everything in reverse of the video, but I'm going to put it back in right now, even though it's not dry, I'm just going to show you, so it saves you a little time. Put in the ribbon cables, so now I can flip it over and start to put it in. Take your time, you want to get it in there just right, because there's a grounding plate in the bottom, so you want to take your time make sure it goes in then you'll be able to put the screws in and then get your cables back and line them up going in 
I took my time here because you get those cables mixed up and they're hard to uh, straighten out. They've got to go a certain way, otherwise it won't close back up. So this is going to take a little bit more time. Then you'll be able to put in, this board will slide in, and then you got the rest of the pieces. Now you don't forget, you got the one that's got to go in the bottom here too. Okay, after I line up the cables, I'll be able to put that one in. Okay, now I've got that little plate at the bottom. Now I put in my chipboard, it's locked in. Now I gotta just rearrange these cables at the top a little bit better and then I'll be able to put on the top piece here and the top piece there. Now if you let it dry long enough and you put the cables on correctly it should fire right up. So I can snap that in, just snap that one in. I've got one more to go, one that's going to be down here. There again, line it up, you have the one screw that you got to put in this and you still got to put the one screw back there. So this should be able to drop right in. There it is. So that's it. That's how to remove the printhead, clean the printhead, and put it back in. Now, removing the printhead is the last resort. This other way of trying it, you can get it to, to free up. Like I said in the video, it didn't work before you started. Maybe it'll work after you get done. Okay, now we got power. It's starting up. So now I'll have to get some cartridges, put some cartridges in there, and then let's see what happens. So I powered up. Now this printer has a power supply problem, so I'm not going to be able to continue it and put in any cartridges. But we do have power back up here again, but it's, it's going to shut down on me. That's what it's been doing. That's why it was in that, the warehouse. I say okay, telling me to close the scanner. So I hope this helps this video. This cleaner is just awesome. We've used it for almost 20 years. There again, the printer just shut down, which I knew was going to happen. It's got a bad power supply.